probably noticed that, that, in fact, we're not in our regular studio. You don't see any of these stuff in the back of us. That's because we were on the road, and we realized we'd never make it back to the studio by 3 o'clock in order to start the show when it's supposed to start. So we're a little late in getting started because we had to go through the neighborhood and we had to spot somebody who we who had a wireless. And uh, we were down in Fort Myers. We, we come down here to watch the old people. You know, we like to get little funny things we can talk about on the show. One of the funniest things that we can see is very old people, not like us. We're old, but very old. We're, we're talking about the 80s and 90s, getting caught, getting caught in a crosswalk between lights. You know, they kind of... They don't know what to do, you know, the lights change, everybody's beeping at them. So down in Fort Myers, they have a lot of very old people who live in trailers, and they always kind of have to cross the highway to get to the 7-Eleven, and the light changes, and you see that little jiggy dance they do, you know. So we like to go down and like to record that so we can talk to you about it. And, and anyway, when it got to be about quarter to three, we knew we were not going to be able to make it back, so we decided to just scour the neighborhoods and turn on our little portable PC which we carry with us and see if we picked up anybody's wireless signal. And lo and behold, at 2346 Buena Vista Drive, uh, the home of Steve and Cindy Novak, although we didn't know them at the time, just they had a strong wireless. We knocked on the door, told them who we were, Buddy and the Moon Lady. We had a show to do, very important, it's seen worldwide around the web. And uh, that could we please come in their house and um, you broadcast, and of course, you know, Steve is Hungarian by birth, he told me, and he's, they have a custom of what, that strangers are always welcome. Exactly, and they'll cook for them on a moment's notice, and right. it's the best. So, in fact, right, right in the back of us, you'll hear once in a while, little chop, chop, chop noises and stuff like that, that's in the back of the camera, is Steve Novak, who's a very, and in the back here is Andrea, his daughter, who just came in, you want to wait for the TV fans out there? Because, uh, I know that she's going to join us for dinner because it's a special event. It's not often that Steve and Cindy have visitors, and we're we're pretty famous, you know, Whitey and the Moon Lady. So we figured we'd come over, and now everybody in the neighborhood is coming in. Here is Cindy right now. She's coming, and she went out to get us our special beverages, which is a special kind of Coca-Cola. We like the super right Coca-Cola. It's the cheapest one, but it uh, you can buy a six pack for 32 cents. And, then, and here she's right back here, Cindy. She didn't want to be photographed. She said, but. No. People in Florida love Whitey and the Moon Lady. And we'll drop into your house one day, hook into your wireless, and we'll broadcast from your house. And uh, you can wave to your neighbors and things like that. So You don't have to invite us. We'll find you. Yeah, we'll find you by the strength of your wireless signal. And we're right into your house. We set up. We know what to do. And we like to come in around dinner time, too, you know, when you're, when, when you're cooking. And we just found out that Steve, we didn't know this at the time, that Steve is, is a, a chef of some renown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh. He is the best chef ever. So, there's Andrea right there. <laughs> this is a daughter speaking, so that you know that's true. Anyway, uh, we thought we would uh, you talk about today in our usual way, uh, the things that amuse us. And um, one of the things that always amuses us is the um, embarrassing situations that we find ourselves in, you know? And uh, let me turn to the moon lady first because she hasn't had a chance to say anything. But, but, in, but in fact, I know she, every day she kind of steps into an embarrassing situation. Often she doesn't realize it uh, until much later when, when she comes out of the coma. And, and she reports, you know what I did today? I can't, you can't believe what I did. But do you have any... But he always believes it because I do them all the time. Well, the last thing I did was... Um, I, I got up at a memorial service with a large, large audience for the uh, person who had been the building manager in the large condo development that we live in. The back, you're okay. at the funeral, you're at the funeral, and you're going to give a memorial speech for who? For a, a, a man who was Bill the Myers. building manager. Bill Myers, the building manager. Right, and so I said, well, I just have a little story to tell. I didn't know him very well. I hadn't been here very long, um, and, but the one contact I had with him uh, was so lovely, being um, kind of womanly in some embarrassing ways. Like when I take my car in, I always go, well, it goes, poof, 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 poof. And, and the guys always... The guys love when she comes in. The thing is, right up the bill right away, $132, you know, no matter what it is. For being stupid, yeah, right? Yeah. So, oh, here she comes again, right up the bill. She doesn't understand anything. Okay. So I called the office and I said, um, I need to talk to somebody about 
the stuff in my attic because I've been inspecting my living, new living quarters. And he said, oh, you want to talk to Phil. Okay. So they put him on the phone, and I said, um, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to ask you this, but I've led a very sheltered life, and there's stuff all over my attic. It looks like, like something a rat would build its nest in. And I didn't know whether to call the exterminator, or I don't know what it is. He said, oh, well, it's insulation. But, but so nice. No sarcasm, no like you stuff. And, you know, it was just so nice. And he said, it, if you want it, we can blow more insulation in there. It'll keep your utility bills down. And I said, oh, oh, oh no, that's all right. So I just wanted to say that Mike was a lovely person and we'll certainly miss him. Well, Mike was the name of the... Of the landscape person who we have had unending battles with. So I just unconsciously buried him instead of the right person. And I didn't realize it till a little bit later that I couldn't stop laughing, but uh, I don't know if anyone else noticed. Let's hope not, <laughs> but let's really hope not. See, that's the kind of embarrassment you can cause yourself when you get your names confused. And uh, so <laughs> Phil is up in heaven now. He just heard this long story about himself, and then all of a sudden he called Mike, you know? So it's so a Phil and Mike, Pat and Mike, and the old story. <laughs> so that, that, that was, let me say that is, in fact, the Moon Lady, in my own experience, even though this is not embarrassing, but she sometimes walks around with her sunglasses on with one dark lens in and no lens in the other. <laughs> and then she wonders why she gets a $132 bill from the guys in the garage. So uh, that's because she's above all that. She, well, she doesn't need any of that stuff. Anyway, I should tell you just a little embarrassing story about myself. Here's something that, that uh, was from way back when I was selling some stuff. Some, some stuff. I had a very important contract to try and sell a guy. This is when I was wearing a suit and a tie, right? And I have to get oh, a little I, close. To, I don't remember those I days. I have to get a little close to to to, to, to do this. But anyway, I go to the guy's office, and uh, this is a general general dynamic. Something like that. It was really big. It was a complex sale, and I and the guy is the that the guy's sitting like this, you know. I, and in fact, but I'm looking at him like this. I'm coming in the office strange, you know. So I say. Well, Frank, it's good to be here, and as you know, we have to negotiate this contract. And he keeps looking at me like this, you know. And let me take off my glasses to get to the kind of full effect. So what I'm getting is a kind of like three-quarters face from him a lot of time. And then uh, they said, uh, if I have something I have to show you on the computer here, and he turns around, and he's cross-eyed. He has one eye is completely like this, you know. And I'm looking at him, and I'm trying to hold it because I need the contract, you know. And he was like this because then both eyes would be pointing out to the, you know. And then when he turned, I saw that one eye was permanently to the right, like that, like that. So needless to say, I lost the contract because uh, I just burst out laughing, you know. Uh, for for went back to my childhood to Ben Turpin. Remember Ben Turpin? He was a little, he was like um, he had a guy, a, a, that kind of crushed eyes, permanently like that little mustache, you know. But it just it's just funny anyway. So that was um, one embarrassing moment for me, you know, because... And for him, don't forget. It well, for him. For him. I mean, but he's more used to it than you are. So that, that was the one embarrassing moment for me, which you can about. The other one, which is the best embarrassing moment ever happened to anybody, is when I was on a uh, plane coming back from Los Angeles to Florida. Uh -huh. I had a lovely lady sitting next to me, someone like Joan, very... She had a nice hairdo, gold jewelry, nice tailored suit, you know, a little woman about 50 who um, kept looking at me the way that Joan is looking at me now. Is it, it was like, oh, my God, who is this sitting next to me, you know? <laughs> Some clown or bozo or the Michelin tar boy, you know, what is he? And, uh, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> want to get a little closer to me so we can do this story. So anyway, we're... We're in a plane and we're going, and they serve us dinner. And I have chicken larange, of course, my favorite dish on Eastern Airlines, whatever it was I was going on. Joey, whoever this woman was looking, you know, she was probably a patron of the arts or something, or, you know, whatever. Philanthropic, you know, and, and this idea of sitting next to me was turning her inside out. And uh, so she she had steak, of course, which I, she probably paid a little premium for. 
and I finished, and I'm looking at the movies, you know, and I'm eating my the chicken orange, and you know, and I finish it, and I just reach over and I take the steak off her plate and I eat it. And when I got it to my mouth, I realized that it wasn't my food. <coughs> I didn't say anything, basically. I just uh, kept staring at the TV monitor because there's no backing out at that stage of the game. <laughs> Thank you.